Hey guys, welcome back to the CNSL Season 7 here on Artosis Cast. We are still in the round of four. Match number one, Scan versus Yoon. We're going to be jumping into game number four. Uh, and Scan right now does lead two to one. Some very good games so far, I'd say, especially that game number one. Anyways, here we go into Apocalypse to see if Scan can get on match point or will Yoon be able to tie up the series. Here we go. In the bottom left spot, we have our Terran player. It is Scan. And in the top or the bottom right, our Zerg player, Yoon. All right. Uh, yeah, I've enjoyed this series quite a bit so far. Definitely some very interesting games. Um, you know, I'm 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 thinking about. Uh, Apocalypse as a map, thinking about the series so far, and yeah, a few things come to mind. First off, it's super rare that Terran does not wall. Now, for instance, this wall is god tier. Like, uh, you can actually make like a Zergling tight. Look, Depot, Depot, Racks. I actually, I'm trying to remember if they patched it actually to make sure there was a hole here. Because tight walls are, like, insanely good. If your Marine pops out on the inside, it's so good for Terran Berserk. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, either way, that could make something like a four pool good. Now, obviously, Yoon's not doing that. He's going for an over pool here. Uh, so kind of a defensive play in a way. And, of course, that, that could go wrong. That could go right. We're going to see here uh, in a moment. I, I imagine that Scan is just going to be completely fine. Just go for that expansion. And yeah, I guess we'll just uh, we'll see how the game starts to play out. But Apocalypse in general, I think is pretty reasonable for Terran versus Zerg, if you think about it, right? So like, as the Overlord comes up here, you'll see, you can kind of see this location more, right? But the two ramps that go up to this high ground, you can kind of do a containment there after the Mutalist play uh, a little bit. This is a hard third to take. They kind of have to take a third elsewhere. So you, you kind of do have a little bit of a containment play. And if you're playing more defensively, a little bit of a defensive play. Although, I mean, if you're playing defensively against Zerg after you have the initial map control, that's pretty bad. Uh, but also, you know, you have these main bases here. Let me just show real quick, right? Where you can't see out of it, right? So if a dropship comes in, you don't have as much advanced warning. So drops can be really strong on Apocalypse as well. So kind of the same thing where like for instance reaver or arbiter is very good here against terran because you just don't really see it coming you know you can try to float some overlords around you can try to float engineering bays and barracks around and stuff but it's just a little bit harder to keep that vision going uh, and really see things coming in now scan gets in scouts a little bit sees that layer yeah, and they did, actually. I, I I was pretty sure about that. They made it so that you do have to have a little tiny hole here. So this is like a two marine thick hole, but still a very, very good wall. Second barracks going up for scan, and it does look like it's going to be just a two racks academy rush. This is the type of rush, academy rush, where you get to move out before mutalisks. So if Yoon decides to make a third hatchery on a different base as opposed to in his main base, that's where his scan has potential at least. To deal some damage to him. Now we don't know uh, if Yoon is going to be going for something like that or not, but just something to uh, to mention, right? Like that is that is something that can be a really big strong move. It's actually, you know, I find it really funny because in practice games, like on the ladder, I think that uh, two racks academy rush. The, this one where you go two D, two marines. Uh, into second racks, gas, academy, and then you make two more marines before the command center finishes. See? Uh, this particular one, I actually don't find to be very good on, like, the ladder, let's say. Whereas in tournament-based play, this is an excellent build. I think it has to do with the edges that people try to take when the match really matters as opposed to just practicing, you know, mechanically good play. Uh, you know, it, it definitely that's something I've noticed in my games. Like, if I do this build on ladder, never win with it. If I do it in a tournament, almost every time I catch a hatchery. It's it's a very it's weird. It's weird, but yeah, people do really alter the way they play. Anyways, uh, this is an excellent group of units. As you can see, the firebat actually takes the same amount of time to build as the marine. Isn't that crazy? Uh, but yeah, he gets out the seven marines, one firebat. 
uh, and a single medic here. So this is going to be really strong. Keeps one fire bat at home and is going to pop out some Marines to shoot from behind the wall. The fire bat just kind of blocking, right? So nice, nice move out here from Scan. Double a creep colony, though. So it doesn't look like Scan's going to get any damage. And four mutas are on the way. Where is that third hatchery? He actually has not made it yet. This looks like a situation where he's... I'm actually... I feel... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so it was overpool? Because I'm like, wait a second. This all seems... Everything seems a little bit wrong here. Like, these mutas are very, very fast. So they are slightly faster mutas than usual. You see, he did try to get in here and maybe do some damage. Took a couple shots of the sunk and decided to back up as the mutas are out. Uh, but this forward push will keep those mutas at bay for a little bit, but it's quite likely that Scan will just lose all of these units, which is not actually a very good play for him. That is not, it is not an even trade, uh, right? Like he slows the mutas down from getting to his base, so it's not like he's getting nothing. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he kills a mutalisk here, but still, that would be a little bit Yoon favored, I think. Uh, we'll try to keep an eye on it. Yeah, coming in with some very good micro before that range is done. You can see just how weak non-ranged Marines can be. Uh, against those mutalists barely any damage and i actually thought he'd probably get a muta i feel like normally you do in these situations but yeah yoon's micro a bit too good now scan turtling up at home and you know with the uh with the mutas coming out this quickly like normally you know he's had the mutas for a bit uh and i guess generally what you'll end up seeing guys is by six minutes your turrets are up and these will come uh, a little bit later than that, but like they could have been there much faster uh, than six minutes. Like I think they could have been there at like six, six forty, six fifty ish. But anyways, they fly in, start killing off some missile turrets, and when your opponent is playing such an aggressive mutalisk opener like this, like you have to, you have to overmake turrets, which is a funny thing to say because it's like, well, I mean, that wouldn't be overmake. That'd be making the right amount, right? Kind of, yes, but no one really makes the right amount against these aggressive mutalist plays like it's actually better to just like way over make just make sure put like four turrets up here right and the thing is the mutas will avoid this area and go somewhere else but like you can see the amount of damage being dealt this is absurd damage the mutas have done so so well here now going after plus one uh right now scan is going for an armory as well as a starport so he's going for those valkyries uh, a missile turret in the main mineral line. I think that's a very smart play. He's got to kind of creep the turrets up a little bit, but I'm not sure. Like, this is this is a huge, huge, huge amount of damage. These mutas have done very well, and you can see that Yoon is, like, seriously kind of all in-ish here. He doesn't have a third hatcher yet. Now, dives on these turrets, and again, not really enough turrets. Uh, obviously, he's got to remake that engineering bay as well, so that is an issue also. The armory does finish up in the starport. Well, at this point, I feel like Yoon can kill anything he wants, right? Like, he's got way too many mutas. Look at this. He's got like 12 mutas right there. In fact, he's got more. He's got minimum 13 mutas. God, that's a lot of mutas. Just flies in on top of everything. Yeah, he just mathematically, he's got this. The Valkyrie's not even going to be able to come out, I think. You can just kill this. It's like, what, are you going to make Marines out of that one barracks and hold? Scan makes a bunker. It's so far away from the starport. Like, this is his last chance as his Valkyrie being the absolute biggest hero. The Valkyrie hero, whatever the name of that unit is. I don't even know. Uh, well, that's that's a dead starport. Okay, this game is super over. Very one-sided game here uh, from Yoon. Like, just crushing through Scan. Feels like uh, Scan not really getting anything done with the initial bio. Didn't have enough turrets as well. GG, let's go on to the next game. All right, so uh, getting into this next game, game number five here. It is tied up two to two, of course. Uh, Yoon with a pretty dominant victory there just a moment ago. And we're on Citadel. You see that Scan is already setting up a decent wall and probably go barracks and second depot here, leaving just that as a whole. Uh, and then looking over at Yoon's side of the map, we'll we'll take a look at exactly what timing. Does he go for a couple drones right there, or is it going to be overpool? Okay, it is going to be a couple drones, so maybe a hatchery first coming out of him. Uh, yeah, it does look that way. So, pretty uh, standard openers overall. 
Uh, and they are cross map as well, right? So definitely a little bit harder to put pressure on, whether that's with bio walking across the map or whether that's with mutas flying across the map. Everything's going to come just a little bit later. And of course, that always does make a big difference, uh, especially at this pro level. Now, a drone coming out for a bit of a scout SCV as well. Looks like they're going to meet in that top left and figure out pretty quickly where each other are. But, of course, not going to be completely aware. Are there Zerglings on the way? Is there uh, a Marine Rush coming? Pretty hard to tell right off the bat. Uh, but, yeah, it, it looks like we're going to have a pretty pretty standard opener here, which I am happy to see. Um, I kind of want to just see standard games between these two, honestly. I, like, it's okay to bend them more towards aggression and stuff, but when it's something like... You know, double proxy barracks or something. I that's not that's not like, you know, I I can win with a double proxy barracks here, <laughs> right? Like, it's not it's not as impressive. Whereas some of these games have looked very good so far, and we're in the top four. Let's get some big macro games going. Hopefully, I hope I hope. Anyways, uh, scan gonna get that command center started. Maybe just a few minerals late. Trying to get his scout on as well. Gonna finally get that going up towards that top right. And he'll see, of course, that it is a hatchery first, and there's absolutely nothing to fear. His Marine's just kind of standing in kind of a defensive formation. Looks like they will push forward in front of that wall just slightly. And that's a quick gas. So what we're going to see here is a fast plus one uh, attack, almost certainly. I Yeah, like I really think that is what we'll see. We'll see if he goes for the third depot or not. Uh, that's a little bit harder to to judge uh i feel like he should but he does not necessarily have to because he does have that wall now a few marines coming out and this is just to save that scb and push those links back also you know when you see those coming up it's like oh gosh do i have to make some more links i don't think Yoon will i think he's gonna know that that was probably a turnaround Back at home, scan, getting engineering bay as well as academy and yeah i was just more drones being started up here by Yoon. The uh, Spire gets started here. So, yeah, everything pretty normal, pretty standard. Uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot about plus one, right? So, plus one for barracks. Uh, that's It's such a common build. Like, you guys see it all the time uh, in professional Terran vs. Zergs and even amateur Terran vs. Zergs, where it's just like, okay, we get the very fast plus one. You will basically have to have a wall to do this build nowadays. Uh, but you get the very fast plus one, you add three racks, and then you just kind of like roam the map a bit with your mass plus one marines. Now, uh, I was actually like really thinking about this and how this, exactly this, is a counter to that build uh, in a way. Okay, so Scan's going to scout this very quickly. Now, here's the problem. He has no opportunity to attack this. You can look down here and say, well, he does have six marines. Oh, medic's almost out. What about that? If he were to lose these first units because he only has one barracks, the chance to win this game goes to very close to zero. Okay, so like even though you scout this and you know that this is here, what are the odds that you get to do something about it? Now, uh, it's not so simple as I've made my third hatch on location. I'm ahead. I win. Okay, but here's here's basically what I was thinking about. Uh, was ba it's like this, okay? So you can't really move out with this build until range is done, right? Range and plus one finish at a very similar time. You have your four racks pumping and all that. Now, if your opponent makes just enough mutas to hold that back, and oh, he's actually on five racks. So this is a little bit different than what I was talking, what I'm talking about right now. But I, I'm going to talk about both, okay? So for the four racks one in particular. Uh, if your opponent makes a decent amount of mutas, let's call it seven, eight mutas, and goes into a quick hydralisk den, gets those lurkers out, right? I feel like this build gets into some trouble because generally you're going to get a much slower science vessel or starport units in general. Now, let's watch. Let's see. Well, I, obviously, like I mentioned, this is a fifth rack, so it's a little bit different. He, the reason why he's going to, and notice how he's hiding the fifth racks. Because he doesn't want him to know. Because if you know it's fifth rack, you're like, oh, you're just not going to attack at all? Okay, let's go lurkers. Let's go hive. You're dead. Uh, but yeah, Scan is like kind of playing risky. Kind of playing a little bit dangerous here. Trying to get that advantage. Uh, now, the Mutas jump in on top of the missile turret. So they're abusing the fact that Scan only made one because you can't make many missile turrets with this build. 
Uh, and then trying to kill off some of these Marines. Now, the way that you defend is by attacking across the map because the Mutas have to pull back to defend. But there's actually a little Ling counterattack coming up. Really good placement. Really good micro here from Scan. Oh my god. Really fantastic. Does such a good job holding. The Muta's right now whittling down this Bioforce a bit. And we see that Yoon is only making Mutalisks. Okay, he's getting his third gas. So it's like, okay, once three gases are up, you can make nine Mutalisks per minute. Uh, that is a hell of a lot of Mutalisks. But five racks plus one Marines will outscale that. So you do eventually need to get into those lurkers. Now he comes in, scouts what's happening, sees, okay, it's pure drone out of here. The Marine's going to try to hit up there. Where do those mutas go? Do they just go all the way home? Oh, no, here they are. Sorry. Little group was uh, still harassing that main base a little bit. And he knows that it's five racks at this point, of course. Looks like this base very, very likely to die. Wow, the Muta's going to kill off all of the Marines, which is huge. But is it as huge as killing off this base? Right? He never got the gas out of it. Didn't really get his minerals back. Wasn't mining with all the drones. And these Muta's are still in the main base getting some damage. And if they just kill Marines as they pop out, like, getting on top of Terran production wins in every matchup. Okay? Like, you just you get on top of it and you kill off the Marines... Or anything, really, because Terran units need to be together. Everything that Terran has is ranged, right? Nothing is good by itself. Like, you have a, a Zealot that pops out, or an Ultralist that pops out, or something like that. It's like, okay, well, this is tanky. This can actually kind of fight as it pops out. A single Marine here, here, and here, they really don't do anything, right? So, getting on top of that production makes it very super weak. And you can see that his Mutas are getting so much damage right now. But he did lose that top left base. So there's a lot of wiggle room here for Scan to take damage, but still be able to play in this game. Now, the Mutas are getting pretty low, so I think they are eventually going to have to run out, but he's getting as much damage as he can. Some Speedlings coming down to attack the front. Look, he's drawn the, Mutas, the, the Marines back. This is where those Speedlings really should hit. The Speedlings look like they are going to start coming down. Okay, they start to run in. Going to get on top of some of these Marines. And he's lost a lot of mutas now, right? You've heard that mutalist death quite a bit. The The marine count has been reduced pretty significantly. But don't forget, Yoon is a bit all in. He's losing basically all of his units. And he doesn't have that many drones. Five drones mining here at the natural. Okay, a bit more healthy in the main. But doesn't even have every mineral patch taken. He's at 20 workers only against 30 of scan. Of course, scan does not have a factory yet. So this is an extremely weird game. Yoon is getting almost enough damage for me to say that uh, he is going to, like, possibly win. But, like, if you look at the turrets, if you look at how weak Yoon's economy is after losing that top left base, I still don't think that Yoon is winning. I still think that Scan is in a very good spot. Okay, he just started his factory now at about 10 minutes, and he has plus one, plus one, right? One, one Marines against one O Mutalisks. The Marines are absolutely stronger here. Okay, they are just scaling like crazy. One, one is insanely good upgrades with Bio. You can play with it for a very, very, very long time. So Scan's got a lot of turrets. He's got a lot of good upgrades on these Marines, and Yoon does start a third hatchery over here at 9 o'clock. So at least that is something that he's got going on. Hydralisk Den with the Lurker upgrade coming. Queen's Nest as well. You know, if he can get into Lurkers, we can actually get ourselves like a real game here. A nice game here. Because this factory is so late. Right? Like, that's part of what this 5 racks does. If your opponent realizes, gets Lurkers right away, and just make sure you can't do anything with the 5 racks before Lurkers are out... You get pretty screwed. Uh, but that wasn't the case, right? Like, Yoon did end up losing that top left. He did a lot of counter damage. So we're in this kind of unique, interesting spot. I definitely still think this scans ahead. But, you know, as lurkers pop out, this will start to swing a little bit. So one factory on the, uh, the way with an add-on and then a starport, right? It looks like we may see Valkyrie tank. 
Because there's no... Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It, you know what? This happens sometimes in these weird games where you bank so much gas, you actually don't need to get your second gas quickly. So this will be a science vessel tank. Because uh, Valkyrie here would be a little bit slow. Um, but anyways, the, the Mutas jump in on top of everything. They see that it is siege tank production coming. Now, he already started the hive. So there's a couple different trains of thought here. Uh, pri primarily, what you want to think about is getting uh, consume very quickly. But I would also really consider Greater Spire. I think Greater Spire could be a great move. Not every Zerg likes that type of move uh, in these positions. But I think that a Greater Spire here is very, very good. Uh, it's just your opponent is going to be trying to do a tank push. His anti-air is going to be severely, severely lacking. Like, uh, you know, Irradiate might come very late. The Science Vessel obviously is very late. When they're on one starport, one factory, it really can be a good move. So we'll just, we'll see if he ends up throwing down that Greater Spire or not. Now, the Bioforce is moving out. Uh, there's been a transition into Lurker, so not as many Mutalisks anymore. And, of course, again, the Bio is 1-1. Bunch of lurkers in the center. Looks like they might do a hold position here, hoping that Scan walks over it. Now, I don't think he's going to get lucky in this regard. His Overlord kind of sees this. Well, I guess it doesn't technically see it, but he sees that they went this way. So you kind of know they're going that way, right? So hopefully he'll move those lurkers, uh, you know, for his own safety over to the other side. The Mutas come in, start picking on that starport a little bit. See Irradiate not started quite yet. Oh, uh, the Mutas getting absolutely just demolished. And it looks like Yoon may be just slightly late on moving the Lurkers back. He does lose one and take a little bit of damage on another one there as well. So yeah, a little bit slow uh, reacting to this Marine movement. Three more Lurkers being created over at this third base at 9 o'clock. So that should be able to kind of keep him safe. But Scan, I believe here, has a timing to possibly kill this base. How many Scans does he actually have? Okay, four, seven. More than enough. More than enough. Sometimes in a situation like this, like you can push the front, but the front is like, there's always more area, right? So like he can maybe force the tanks to siege three times, two times to three times. Uh, but yeah, let's, ooh, that was, I guess he just did not suspect that the Marines would be there. Anyways, uh, the lurkers run all the way back. He's waiting for consume to finish. Let's see if the tanks can do anything before consume is done. Cause it doesn't seem that way to me. The, the uh, Defiler just kind of waiting here. I mean, he's going to kill the Sunks. That's kind of nice. But as soon as Consume is done, you're going to go Dark Swarm. You're going to gobble up a couple Warlings, Dark Swarm again. And then everything has to push back. I think it might have been a better idea to try here. You know, you can actually even hit the gas from over in this area. Things like that. But yeah, it doesn't look like Scan's going to get too much done with this right now. Yoon does force him back with that Dark Swarm after Consume is done. And this is, you know, this is part of the reason why you don't see these types of tank pushes too, too often. Tank pushes actually have a pretty low win rate uh, in Terran versus Zerg, uh, you know, in, in pro level play. Because this happens, right? Like, what are these Sea Chanks going to be able to do? It's like, well, not too much. And then you're a little bit lower, right? We have two, like three Sea Chanks were made with Siege Mode and the add-on for the factory. And you look at that and it's like, well, we could have had like two more vessels right now, right? Or maybe three more vessels right now. Uh, so it's it's pretty it's pretty significant, the difference that it makes. Like your Senka Starport always has to be later and everything. Your uh, pressure from air units going to be a lot later as well. Now another Nidus going down. Uh, wait, did he? No. Oh, I'm wondering what that Nidus is for. Uh, anyways. I uh, gonna go ahead and oh maybe that was actually the original Nidus that was being built over here secondarily it was built at the uh, natural first or something I, I guess I just missed that uh, anyways not a big deal now uh, the lurker is pushing everything back for scan he is still trying to get something done with these seed shanks but again it's like it, it, they don't do that full damage uh, with with the dark swarm down so gonna pull back and well a couple tanks here coming out i'm surprised there's two more tanks i have to be honest not something that i really caught and yeah i, I don't know well i mean they're still somewhat useful right like even against the dark storm sometimes you can find little ways little missions for them to go on like look at this right if you 
if you scan, you're going to be able to blow up the, the gas, and that's kind of nice. All right, so scan continues to control the map for the most part. Group of bio here. Couple Marines over here. Okay, has them, has them scouting out. There is that fourth base coming up for Yoon. Some bio walk around the center. The upgrades are pretty darn good. Scan did get that plus two attack. He has two eBays going as well, which is pretty big. Up comes the Defiler with Lurkers here. And actually, that was some very good targeting there from Scan. So only one Lurker remains. But of course, that one Lurker is invincible. Uh, probably wants to blow up that, that Defiler. And in fact, does do so. Some plagues starting to go down. He actually cleared out the Lurkers here. Is there an opportunity to attack? It doesn't look like it. Again, unfortunately here for Scan, unable to to kill any bases after that, that third base early on in the game. Now... Hmm... I'm trying... Okay, so... Here's, here's a couple things. First off, we have Medic Energy on the way, which is very a very rare upgrade. I think it is absolutely worth it once you start getting decent income. Uh, you want those Medics to start with more energy. You can hit your restorations a bit better. They're going to be ready to heal a bit better there as well. Scan denies this gas. Okay, so there are good things going on. What I'm looking for, guys, is what's the win condition here for Scan? How does he actually... Is it just continually pressuring from a couple sides while doing some containment? Because it, like, I he's he's ahead right now for sure, but it doesn't feel like he's super breaking in yet. Like, I don't see dropships being made. The siege tank count is not really high enough to do too too much. We have uh, ultras coming out, which is kind of nice for Yoon, but he is he is pretty gas light to be doing that right now. Mm, yeah, a couple more dark storms go down, and looks like Scan might be even thinking about taking another base at this point. He does have the four bases mining right now. Two two is done, and in fact, Vessel Energy gets started too. Dude, Scan really is next level. I swear to God, like these two things are going to eventually become standard late game. Seriously. And I haven't seen, like, basically anyone get medic energy, but it is very good. Starting with more energy is huge. Being able to bank up to more happens sometimes. Not a whole lot, but it does happen. Uh, but, yeah, starting with more so you can hit those restorations and stuff is awesome. And, of course, with the vessels, always makes sense uh, once you have the extra gas. So, some good irradiates going down. That was an excellent plague that time. Uh, he does start restoration now after that medic energy. Maybe it would have been smarter to get medic or uh, restoration before the medic energy here. I would I would say that that would probably be a better order. Although you can see like the efficiency that he's looking for with getting that medic energy first. And finally, Yoon does clear out uh, the four siege tanks that were over here. So this, th he did get that gas denied for a long time. That was that was some high quality stuff from Scan utilizing the siege tanks in such a way. I guess that's, yeah, it's kind of interesting because this was a base that because this wasn't his starting spot down here, right? That gas is kind of on the outside, like harder to harder to defend. Kind of smart. Looks like we might get an eraser going on, by the way. Woo, going for it, but uh, the drone's being transferred really, really quickly. Scourge coming down here as well, so it doesn't seem like he'll get too, too much done right there. Now, some Ultra Ling running down the map. A Defiler is there as well, so might be able to shut down a base. Ultra's sitting up here, plus four armor, but this is plus three attack, so the attack upgrade a bit better for the bio. Scan definitely going to be able to break into here, it's looking like. Another eraser here in the natural. Dark Storm does go down, so the Dark Storm will keep that base alive for now. And... Yeah, I guess at this point, Yoon just doesn't have a whole lot left. I really... I do think this game... This was a really interesting one because... The denial of this gas was so crucial. It was so crucial in this game to slow that gas intake down. 
like really he had it gone for minutes and that's like you know thousand gas plus that he doesn't that you doesn't get at this point and now all this continual pressure from scans macro is really really starting to add up he's picking units off left and right yeah there's a dark storm goes down but his upgrades are so fantastic one fireback kills all those lings and scan just continues to move forward like this looks this looks fantastic for him i think he's just going to take this game yun has very little left over just some sunkens trying to defend this third base or well fourth base at this point now more and more erasers going on which of course you know again with that uh vessel energy really allowing him to do so Well, the uh, plagued Marines gonna walk away, and dude, these erasers are nonstop. Really, I swear to God, like the the vessel energy is deceiving <laughs> on how much it really gives you. It really does help to uh, get those irradiate irradiates out so much faster. He's killed so many drones at this point. Only twenty five remain. Very little mining actually going on at this point. And, like, he's denied so much gas. We don't even see Scourge being made. I think this is the end of the game. Again, another excellently played longer game from Scan. Kind of a wild opener on both sides when you think about it. Well, uh... I get... Uh, depleted, depleted. This one's plenty. Yeah, he's gonna GG. GG! Uh, Scan takes the lead three to two.